Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schulz. This week, we're back to North America for three new tales. And normally, that means we linger with Charles Skinner in his Myths and Legends of Our Own Lands. However, this week, we're not going to do that. We will start there, because I have a tale from upstate New York that really just must be told. Um, and I'm going to apologize now, but the bad Dutch accent is a part of the story. I know that I often wondered why we called a baker's dozen 13, and it turns out that it starts in a bake shop in Albany, New York. This is The Baker's Dozen. Bas Volkert Jan Peterson van Amsterdam kept a bake shop in Albany and lives in history as the man who invented New Year cakes and made gingerbread babies in the likeness of his own fat offspring. Good churchman though he was, the bane of his life was a fear of being bewitched, and perhaps it was to keep out evil spirits who might make one last effort to gain his mastery over him ere he turned the customary leaf with the incoming year, that he had primed himself with an extra glass of spirits on the last night of 1654. His sales had been brisk, and as he sat in his little shop, meditating comfortably on the gains he would make when his harmless rivals, the Knickerbockers, bakers of marbles, sent for their usual supply of oily cakes and mince pies on the morrow, he was startled by a sharp rap, and an ugly old woman entered. Give me a dozen New Year's cookies, she cried in a shrill voice. Well, then, you needn't be so loud. I ain't deaf, then. A dozen, she screamed. Give me a dozen. Here are only twelve. Well then, twelve is a dozen. One more. I want a dozen. Well then, if you want another, go to the devil and get it. Did the hag take him at his word? She left the shop, and from that time it seemed as if poor Volkert was bewitched. Indeed, for his cakes were stolen. His bread was so light that it went up the chimney when it was not so heavy that it fell through the oven. Invisible hands plucked bricks from that same oven and pelted him until he was blue. His wife became deaf. His children went unkempt, and his trade went elsewhere. Thrice the old woman reappeared, and each time she was sent anew to the devil. But at last, in despair, the baker called on St. Nicholas to come and advise him. His call was answered with startling quickness, for almost while he was making it, the venerable patron of Dutch feasts stood before him. The good soul advised the trembling man to be more generous in his dealings with his fellows, and after a lecture on charity he vanished, when lo, the old woman was there in his place. She repeated her demand for one more cake, and Volker Jan Peterson gave it. Whereupon she exclaimed, The spell is broken, and from this time a dozen is thirteen. Taking from the counter a gingerbread effigy of St. Nicholas, she made the astonished Dutchman lay his hand upon it, and swear to give more liberal measure in the future. So, until thirteen new states arose from the ruins of the colonies, When the shrewd Yankees restored the original measure, 13 made a baker's dozen. And that is the baker's dozen, captured by Charles Skinner. We know that the baker's dozen has always been 13. And I just love this story behind it. Sometimes there's a question that carries through from youth that... Every time you get an answer for it, it seems like the right one. 
and this story of Volker Jan Peterson van Amsterdam in Albany with his New Year's cakes and gingerbread babies. Well, this makes as much sense as any other, doesn't it? This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget that if you want to help support the podcast and keep it ad-free, you can always head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where for as little as a dollar a month, you'll get early access to every story and a nice little treat from me. As always, thank you so much for listening.